so hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and uh, there was no video for the last round because problem c1 was too easy and problem c2 was too hard so it was kind of pointless to make a video for either of those but uh, in this video we will solve problem e that is sending a sequence over the network from round a26 which is a div 3 round so let's start with the solution before we move on to the solution, uh, I want to take a small break and tell you guys about Newton School's Premier Coding Contest. So as all of you guys love CP and all of you, all of you guys love to code, this is a great opportunity to show off your coding skills and also win some cash prizes. There are prizes worth rupees 30,000 and along with this you can also win some free coding courses or also grab some internship opportunities. Right, so uh, for this reason only Newton School organizes this contest every month on a global scale. So you can also benchmark yourself where you are lacking or where you are standing uh, compared to other students. So this month it will be on 27th October. It will be around two and a half hours starting from 9 p.m. And it is absolutely free to uh, sign up for. So there will, be, there will be a link down below. So do check out that link and sign up for the contest for absolutely free. Yeah. So let's move on to the solution now. So in the problem, uh, we want to encode some array A. So let's say array A looks like one, two, uh, five, seven, nine, and let's say three. So we want to encode this, and to encode this, we will break it into segments. Let's say three segments: one, two, five, seven, and three. Size of the first segment is two. Size of the second segment is three, and size of the third segment is one. So I can take the size of the segment and either add it to the left of the segment or either to the right of the segment. For example, I have this two. So I can make two segments, either I can make 2, 1, 2 if I append 2 to the left or either 1, 2, 2 if I append 2 to the right. So I can either have 2, 1, 2 or 1, 2, 2. Similarly here either I can have 3, 5, 7, 9 or either 5, 7, 9, 3. Similarly either I, here I can have 1, 3 or 3, 1. So I will create a new array B from these. So I will create a new array and create array B from this. So I can either choose 2, 1, 2 or 1, 2, 2. So I'll let, let's say choose 1, 2, 2. Here I choose, let's say 5, 7, 9, 3. And let's say here I choose 1, 3. So this is my new array B. In the problem, uh, we don't know this array A. So we have not been given this array A. We have only been given this array B. This is the only given array. And there might have been some errors during the encoding. So array B might not be a valid encoded array. So given this array B, you have to tell if there exists some valid array A for it or not. So given array B, uh, state yes or no. If it is, if it's valid or not, you can say if it's valid or not. Because there might have been some errors during the during the process, and the given array B might not be valid, right? So you have to answer in either yes or no if array B is validly encoded or not, right? So that is the entire problem. So how can we solve this? Let's move on to the observations. So the very first observation is that sizes are the only useful information. So these are the only useful information. Right? For example, uh, we have 1, 2, we have 5, 7, 9, and we have 3. Right? These elements can be anything. It can either be 2 the power 20, this can be uh, 9 into 7, something like this. This can be 3, let's say 3, 0, 7. Size of this is 2, size of this is 3, size of this is 1, right? So the size is the only thing that is giving us some kind of information about these segments, right? The elements can be anything, right? The elements are like quite random. We don't care about the elements. The only thing that will help us uh, towards the answer are the size of the segments, right? So the only thing useful to us are these sizes. So our approach will be uh, because if you encode this to array B, let's say we have array B. So we have one, two, two, we have five, seven, nine, three, and we have one, three. So some of these elements will be sizes, right? Some of these elements are sizes. So we'll try to iterate over the array B and try to fix or find if an element can be a size or not, right? So we'll iterate over the array and try to see if some element can be a size or not. So that will be our approach. So our approach is to iterate over 
array b and try to see for every element if it can be a size or not if it can be a size or not so that will be our, our approach so how how can you do this so let's see that uh, let's take the same example as above let's say your array b is equal to 1 2 2 uh, 5 7 9 3 let's say 1 3 so let's say you want to check if your element 3 is a size or not we want to check if this is a valid size or not so to check this we have two cases if it is a size right if this is a size it will either have segment to its left or either to its right so there are two cases either the segment is to its left so if you have one two two uh, five seven nine three and one three so if this is a size and it has segment to its left right the size of this is three so it will it will have three elements as segment to its left so th this will kind of form a complete block right so the only thing left is if the leftover array to its left is valid or not right so that is our only concern now. if my three is a valid size and this is a valid segment then the entire array to its left should also be a valid segment or you can say valid array so to check this we can keep some kind of dp let's say let's say keep a dp dp of 5 which will tell me if my array up to index i is valid or not right so now if i want to check my answer for this element 3 i have this element 1 element 2 element 3 so so i can just check here if my dp of 3 is equal to 1 not if my dp of 3 is equal to true or not well, this is true if my dp of 3 is equal to true or not if my dp of 3 is true then it means that this 1 2 segment is a valid array and then this entire segment will be become valid right so if i have 1 2 2 i have 5 7 9 and 3 this is my valid size if this is a valid segment then the entire array to its left should also be valid then i will check if my dp of 3 is valid I can say that my entire array up to this point is valid, right? So I can say my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Then I can say that my dp of 7 is also valid. My dp of 7 is also valid. Right? Then it means that this entire array, this entire array or segment is a good segment or a good array. Right? So that is the thing. That is the case when your when your segment is to the left. And whatever the case when segment is to the right, that is also pretty easy. So let's take the same example. When segment is to its right. For example, we have 1, 2, 2, uh, 5, 7, 9, 3, and let's say 1, 3. So we're going to check if this segment 1 is valid size or not. Right? So let's say the segment is to its right. So if the segment is to its right, then uh, the size is one here. So it will have one element to its right. So if this segment is valid, then the entire array to its left should be valid, right? So this entire array should be valid also. As we saw above, right, my DP of seven is valid, right? So I know that my DP of seven is valid. This is seven elements. So I can say my DP of seven is valid. If my dp of 7 is valid, it means that this entire segment is also valid, right? So you can say that your dp of 9 is also valid. Your dp of 9 is also valid, right? So that is the case when the segment is to its right. Uh, so these are the only two cases. So that is the entire solution. So if I have to summarize it, summarize it once again, uh, I will iterate over all the elements iterate over all elements from let's say index 1 to n and then let's say for some element bi uh, it, it will have two cases either segment is on left either segment is on right or either it is not a valid size it is not a valid size so if the segment is on left, this is the first case. Let's say I have my element bi here. Then the bi elements on the left side 
will be in this segment then i just need to check for the leftover area right leftover area if dp of leftover array is valid then it means that my dp of index i is also valid that is the case uh, when the segment is on the left and when the segment is on the right it will be something like uh, leftover array element bi and then bi elements on the right this is my segment so if my dp of leftover array is valid here if my dp of leftover array is valid then it means that my dp of index i plus these element that is bi will also be valid right so these are the only two cases and if and if either of these are not true then it means that my current element is not a valid size right it means that my dp of i is equal to 0 so these are the cases and if you guys want to see the code for this here are the codes right now here is my dp array I will iterate over uh, the, all the elements, and if my i minus v that is when the uh, the segment is on the left, so I can say segment is on left. So if my dp of i minus the segment size is a valid, then it, it means that my dp of i is also valid. Otherwise, if segment is on right, if segment is on right, then it means that I will check if my dp of i minus 1 is valid. If it is valid, then it means that my dp of i plus vi is also valid. Now, these are just these cases, right? So you can look at these cases. It is the same thing. And that is the entire solution. So if you guys have some doubts, feel free to join my Discord. So I am more than happy to answer your doubts there. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.